in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed God is going to put a unique rule in your life that applies to only you in a way that if somebody looks at you, he will say, Kai, but God, this is unfair. God knows what he's stopping. And once you walk with that mold, you will find out that you will circumvent that weakness and you'll be able to be great. There are others, your weakness, you are a man of God. Even if a lady walks naked in front of you, it does not affect you. But if you see an envelope, even if you are passing and you see an envelope on the ground, you must pick it and check what is inside. Watch this. I know you are laughing, but pay attention. Are we together? Are we together? So God knows when the devil wants to destroy you, he can bring enemies in the name of members for only one year who are millionaires, but carry within them the spirit of your destruction. If you have not gone through the school of the spirit that has purged you and broken you to a point where you lose an appetite for those things. So God can give you rules like you will not have more than four cars at any point in your life. Your wife will say, what kind of a husband are you? They gave us 10 cars. You gave away six. Why? And you say, I have a covenant with God. God told me I will at any given point I will only have four cars it is not a doctrine it is a training God has vetted you in the spirit and I found out that if you have more than that that is that is the gauge of your discipline if it crosses that it can do something to you is someone learning there are people no matter how they fast and pray they will not be able to pack a stadium to talk to the people the reason is because what will happen to you after that meeting because of your low level of prayer your low level of consecration God will have to respect the allowance you have given him in your life he will not expose you to battles that are beyond your level of spiritual preparation is this making sense to you so the higher you want to rise that's what i'm trying to say you must have a deep and a rich experience with god there are levels when you get to with god it no longer becomes an emotional dealing it is a covenant there are certain things when you do with god god will bring a sworn blessing upon you because you have gone this far i swear by my name that in any good state you will never beg for bread again to your children's children you see when you see people come with certain transgenerational blessings they didn't come just by dancing around and say god sent me. it was an experience with god when abraham took his child only child and placed that child he actually was going to kill the child in fact he actually killed the child because when the child dies in your heart, he really died. Romans chapter 4 already tells us his contemplations that Abraham planned to kill Isaac. Then when he's done, he'll say, I've obeyed you. Please raise my child back to life. Let me go back home with him because I don't know what to go and tell his mother. I know we easily say Abraham gave up Isaac. Women, mothers, do you know after waiting 25 years? Honey, where are you? And the the aides they are not all the aides to have gone home because they went with him Abraham was already ready for his marriage to fail because if you are a woman if that kind of husband comes back let me see the hand that prepares the food for him and he says honey um, let's just kneel down and give God thanks 
in this our generation that is over before he even arrives you have to read the scripture with your mind too so if you don't know what he was willing to lose as he carried isaac do you know what it means it's a different thing that they murdered your son but that you killed him by yourself for the rest of your life you will not be normal again you will hear the voice of your son day and night even if it is after 100 years father what is this the, the people who would have killed abraham himself were the servants among those servants there will be loyalists of his wife somebody will say let's kill this man because we can't stand the shame of telling the wife that we escorted the husband we've not only lost our jobs we've lost our lives too let's kill him so that we all die here and Abraham said it does not matter let's go and God was watching the first and only man that acted what he would be doing himself when he put Abraham on that altar he lifted the knife with the tears in the son's eyes he still did not stop it was God who had to say stop my question is what if Abraham did not know how to hear God Let me repeat it again. There must have been a tribal and see before he gave him that instruction, there was a training on hearing God. What if Abraham, the life of Abraham and his son was at the mercy of a particular training that he went through? Jumping the school of the spirit is dangerous because something you are learning today is what will make another training tomorrow make sense what if abraham could not hear god and he finally killed isaac he would have written a book that god is a killer whereas god said stop the problem was his hearing the same way god told you in business stop but when god was training you to hear him you did not hear god told you have only three children you had the fourth one now the fourth one came with trouble because you did not hear we keep blaming god on many things but simply because we could not stay in the school of the spirit. Please listen carefully. Yesterday, we spent, we spent quite some hours in the airport before we came. They kept shifting the flight. I got up early in the morning and while I was praying, I sent my airport people a I sent them a text I said I sense that we're going to travel in the afternoon I've already had that sense and I kept seeing a plane in my vision and I saw the Sun while the plane was going and I know this is not morning I said no 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 the flight is in place I already prepared my heart I said Lord whatever it is I give myself joy I stayed for five hours in the airport but I was already I had already prepared what to do so there was no disappointment because somewhere in my training he had taught me how to know when he is speaking there are many troubles you get into simply because you don't even know what God is doing are we together now there are times you are about to enter a car that would be the end of your life but because you rejected the training of discernment you are unable to know is this God or is this just my mind in these days leadership and exploit in the spirit will be at the mercy of your experience with God there is something that if you do not know about God will destroy you completely there are men of God who collected money that's what killed them money they should not collect somebody sincerely who came not knowing that that was the deception of jacob and esau and they gave their bet right without knowing and they collected 10 million naira that 10 million naira they collected was the beginning of their downfall but when you walk with god he will train you that as you rise not every gift is for your taking you must have the stamina and the discipline to say no to many good things just because it's good does not mean it is of god you must be trained to know it is not only evil you say no to 
there are many good things in your life if satan tries to use sin and evil to kill you and you escape he will use good things and kill you the most important thing is that you die doesn't matter with what he uses to kill you are we together my sister you never knew that your assignment is to marry a great man of God who is going to be blessing the world. So, as a young lady on campus, God begins to deal with you in a certain way. When a gentleman comes to you and says, I like you, God says, let me not even hear that thing again. Go back and let's pray. I say, God, what are you doing with me? You do not know that he's building capacity because the kind of life and destiny you are going to be part of requires a lot of stamina. If you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Some of you, God knew that you would be a minister in Nigeria. You were hoping you would go abroad. God said, this is your place of assignment. Nigeria seems to be having problems. You stay here. This is where your assignment is. Other people are running. God says, you are not going anywhere. This is your place of stay. That was why he taught you on faith. It took one year to teach you on faith. And you were saying, God, what is it about faith? He said, no, your kind of faith, you don't know the obstacles that will be coming. Learn faith. He will give you instructions to read the books of men of God on faith. Listen, don't run away from the training of God. It does not make sense while he's building you, but you stay there. For someone right now, you are a leader, you are a man of God, but God has stopped you from starting a church. God has stopped you from starting a fellowship. All the people you started together with, they have all kinds of ministerial platforms and you are just there to the point that people look at you and say, ah, but there's wisdom. You, you have been serving for three, five years. Why don't you start a little fellowship? And sincerely you want to do that. And God says, no. The reason is because there is something else he has prepared for you. Now, you can force yourself out of the will of God. He will honor you, but you must be willing to bear the consequence. We together the man Gordon Lindsay Gordon Lindsay who who founded Christ for the nations not Christ for all nations Christ for the nations for a long time in Gordon Lindsay's life he only kept partnering with people and ministries and people looked at him and said you're a very anointed man why don't you have your own platform you know and God would not let him for a long time he looked like a fool until God finally gave him the allowance and when he started Christ for the nations, he just spread around like wildfire. Please hear me, great people. End time leadership and end time ministry will not be based on skill alone. End time leadership and end time ministry will not just be based on technical academic skills. If you were in the days of Noah, I shared it the last time I was in Enugu here. If you were in the days of Noah and the flood was coming, whether you were a professor or you had a store or you had a container to import and export, the rain that was coming was coming to sweep everybody. There was only one skill that was needed. You're hearing God and you're obeying him. Every time in human history, something seems to happen that shows the superiority of a man's spiritual advantage as against any other advantage i know that we live in a world today where we over celebrate intellectualism i'm not against that intellectualism is wonderful there are times we celebrate all kinds of crowns and we make it look like even though you are not spiritual at least since you are intelligent it's still all right when that flood comes it is not business people who will survive when that flood comes imagine that you were in the days of noah and a flood was coming let's assume you just finished dedicating your shop and then the next day the flood will start you will not be spared simply because your mind thinks well the flood was going to sweep everything there was only one man who survived and he survived on the strength of his relationship for him to be able to build an ark of Gopher who tells you he was a skilled man. That it took technical skills to make that happen. But it took a spiritual foundation to get the instruction. 
leaning on your technical skills alone leadership skills i'm not against it right submit yourself to all of that but please behind everything you do you must know that your experience with god it's very very important so as a ceo you sit down and when someone talks about the lord jesus mm -hmm. we're not talking spiritual things here we're talking business really find out how the earth was created the bible tells us that the things that do appear came from the realm of the spirit so any other thing that must appear in your life must come from the realm of the spirit i can tell you the truth my life today the in order of priority the richest advantage in my life is not anything physical in fact i don't trust things that are physical the greatest advantage in my life today is my relationship and my experience with god that is the commodity and the product that is worth dying for no matter what else you lose the honor that you have only comes because he was there and he's there the lifting that you have everything that happens in your life i would be foolish today to trade my experience with god for more ministerial doors trade my experience with god for more no 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 i will keep learning i learn leadership i train myself but not at the detriment of the word of god my first call in this leadership session go back to the place of your spiritual foundation i don't care what kind of business you do i don't care if you are an administrator you need to be able to build capacity a deep and a rich experience with god that will now give you the stamina to rise in your name we will rise i don't know you reign no it's in your name we will rise i don't know you, you may have heard me say it in my teachings that the lord told me he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you as at the time god told me that thing i didn't have anything more. ladies and gentlemen But I said, even if you never give me anything, my life is committed to revealing you. Do you love him more than your business? Don't just say yes, because God likes these kind of questions. He will test it. Do you love him? If God asks you to shut your business for one month, you know how much you make per day. And God says, for me, shut it down and spend one month will you bind and cast that voice and say god cannot speak like this not after what he knows happened to me last year the jealousy of god demands that he becomes the epicenter of your christian experience not one of the many important things please listen carefully god demands that he becomes the epicenter of your experience may god forgive me if i'm lying but I've searched my life, huh? I do not know if there is anything in my life today that I cannot give God. Like I said, it is by God's grace and mercy. But as far as I know, no. And you won't believe how many things I've laid down to speak like this. When you see God doing great things with men, Remember, this, this, this minister's conference is to show you the inner workings of the results you see. You don't just stand and say, God's power is going to touch somebody. You are not a herbalist. Even a herbalist, go and ask them. They have levels. There are herbalists that are failures. It doesn't mean that just because you are serving the devil, you are successful. It's still the same rule of, of consecration and depth. Herbalists are in levels. There are those that, that you go to and it will still not work because they don't even know the devil. Are we together now? So just because it is Satan you are serving does not guarantee results. No. 
you need to know the devil deep enough it still takes this relationship we're talking about I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka this song came to me early in the morning I was in Cameroon and just worshiping the Lord very early in the morning celebrating his greatness and then this song came to my spirit the house part says there is no one like you that's what it means I have searched it took a long search to come to the conclusion that no one is worth my life so don't tell me why are you so fanatical I searched I'm, I, I, my loyalty to God is not in ignorance I have options but I checked he is my loving him is a conclusion now you understand that I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka Guess what the chorus says Hey, Baba Wani Kamaraka I will love him in life and I will love him in death call me CEO I am still the lover of God call me a businessman I am still the lover of God call me an apostle and a prophet the noblest title you can give me is the lover of God for that is the realm where no eye has seen that is the realm where no ear has heard neither has it come into the comprehension of men what God has in store not for them that preach not for them that do business not even for them that pray the realm of lovers is the realm of, of a, a, a height that you cannot understand yes. hear me this morning service came to turn you from a businessman to a lover of God from a man of God or a pastor to a lover of God if this is all I achieve and we're not able to touch any other thing within the time left it was a successful thing my assignment this morning or afternoon is not just to come and share with you leadership principles you belong to an excellent church don't tell me you are a CEO leave the issue of your container are you a lover of God leave the issue of your restaurant congratulations are you a lover of God leave the issue of the church that you have for a minute forget about your congregation and your desire to build your church and your desire for more land and your desire to find him no 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 throw all that away searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched and found that Baba Wani he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Hear me? Most of us 
as you are hearing me preach you need to repent because most of us would prefer to be called the CEO of XYZ conglomerate than to be called the lover of God it looks like an insult what a demeaning title give me something more superior that this me is standing among my peers for instance he owns five conglomerates he owns this and that he's a billionaire he's an intelligent person noble descriptions but nothing comes close to the realm of love because when everything failed it was love that stood when wisdom failed, love was still standing. Even when faith failed, love was still standing. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Your leadership will be an ineffective leadership. God will not even give you an opportunity to scale the heights of influence until he knows that you love him and you are passionately addicted and connected to him. If I ever give you any secret about my life and the privilege of the bits that God is doing with this man, this is it here. It is beyond the realm of prayer. It is beyond the realm of fasting. It is beyond the realm of Bible study. Go and ask God how much I love him and you will know why he does what he does. Now, please listen. When the first lady is not around here, but yesterday, when your pastor finished introducing anybody, everybody, even though she's far away, thousands of kilometers, he still took the time to... Not even the man of God who came to preach made him forget his wife. Not even the dignitaries that came made him to forget his wife. He had to honor her and you celebrated her. There are some people, eh? It doesn't matter where they are the jealousy of God keeps trailing them like a shadow because of the depth of their love for him so while they are sleeping someone is planning that this man and his children they should not live to survive the end of 2022 God will not even allow you start praying about it he takes that issue personal who did you say you want to kill did the Bible not say jealousy is the rage of a man? You want to know how angry a man can be, you touch his wife. Most of us have not been able to secure the jealousy of heaven because your love for God is still in question. Can I tell you? Only God knows the arrows that fly by day against some of us. The noisome pestilence. It is only when we get to heaven we will know the amount of things we have eaten that are poisons that should have killed us. No matter how intelligent you are, we see impact. As far as the world of men is concerned, when men want to get you, only God can save you. So if you are standing, it's because there's something about your love. Listen to me. Any container that replaces God in your life is an idol. I don't care if it's Bibles that are inside. Anything that replaces God, your business, the things you are importing and exporting, the restaurants that you have the leadership man of god do you know church can become an idol don't think just because it's a spiritual venture church can become an idol you don't care whether god is there or not your relationship with god can go places provided this the religiosity of the activity is there do you love him don't think God is wasting your time this morning. Do you love him? Many of you have given your heart to people of lesser honor. You gave your heart freely for people whose lives you did not even verify. And here is someone who has assured you that he loves you. And you are still asking questions. Can I trust you with my heart? Please hear me. There are realms of increase. There are realms of finances. I wish sometimes my heart boils to want to give a few testimonies. But sometimes, even when I give them, I listen to the message, I still feel guilty again. I say, I shouldn't have said that. I should have just preached. I cannot begin to tell you the things that God has done in this life. Purely a love affair. 
when a man buys something and takes to his wife it's not her birthday it's not any anniversary it's not whatever he just buys a car and gives his wife and she says my husband what is this for he said thank you for being my wife you can stand in anger and say but this is not fair well that's the blessing of taking the risk to be his wife so when you see a man love the lord like a faithful bride don't say why is god blessing this person i can't remember him praying over this thing why did god still answer because in the realm of lovers anything is allowed god can take a man's prayer request of 10 years and give you you can see a man hosting dimensions of grace and glory that does not seem to match your knowledge of him it is the lover who gave him not just the giver a giver can give but when a lover gives he gives to reflect his love are we together i can give you 10 naira as a giver but when a husband gives to his wife he does not give sparing because the gift is supposed to communicate how much he loves her after this meeting you see some of you will go back and the things god begins to do in your life in addition to what you learned yesterday people will ask you and say come what is it about you tell them you want to know why god does the things that he does find out my love for him don't just find out my service for him find out my love not just my money not just the things that i do my love for him i've seen what god can do look i have a lot of these my wonderful children and both in abuja and then zaria and sometimes when i travel and i'm with them after service that's when their own church starts all they jump in they pray in tongues and do whatever as soon as they say the grace of our lord jesus christ they are lining up and waiting to hug me and when they come to hug me they don't care whether i'm tired they don't care whether i've preached that is their own service and they hug and sometimes they ask me to bring my ears down can you imagine that that's the implication of love i bring my ears down and they tell me i want bicycle or with confidence or my birthdays next week sometimes they write me letters they mix all kinds of english and force me to read it that that is how far love can go so two of you can do the same thing it will look like god spares one and the other one is still remaining there because love created exemption for another please hear me return back to your love life any business any church any ministry some of you may need to shut down a few ministrations and say thank god for all the invites church is growing but i need to shut down a bit and spend that time with him and say the lover of my soul i am still here that boy you carried is still there i know today they call me daddy they call me emoji they call me prophet they call me apostle they call me evangelist but i have come to you and god says you still remember even after all this lifting prepare for the next level i just described myself for you prepare for the next level so that when you think you have exhausted these people oh they've tried you see a new layer of glory and grace and signed upon their life will be the lover of their soul hallelujah we're going to pray i have about 20 minutes i will talk about something within that 20 minutes we're going to judiciously use our time but for the next three or four minutes you're going to cry whether you want to go on your knees whether you want to do whatever you're going to say lord forgive me if i'm to be sincere i know that certain things have replaced you it may not be that you are bad i'm not this is not a call to condemnation it's a call to repentance to say lord you don't have to go on your knees or what but whatever position is comfortable we're going to pray we're going to pray we're going to pray we're going to pray Adonai, Lamb of God, 
You are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Help me. I return I don't know when the passion for ministry took your place I didn't even realize that this is how far I veered off ah cry 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 I belong to you total surrender my heart my life my everything you're not wasting your time man of God this is the secret to genuine power more than just principles your experience with God for some of you you need to repent you have been distracted you veered off looking for many things Take my body, my soul. 
of my spirit, breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place, take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Sheba la masana da baliana. Ena masheda baliana da masana da balada. Shabra na balada masona balada biana balada. Shala krate kete pele kete baliana da balada. Just a few more minutes we are praying. There is a work of purging that God is doing in someone's life. Purging. God is purging. God is purging. How I love to stand for you. How I love to worship you. Keep praying, and even though it hurts me for every step I take, and even though it pains me for every move I make, but I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you. Alajalaka sobrande gebala tuziata. I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. Hoganedo. Call 
worshiping God is sorting your business while you are worshiping God is arranging things for you while you're worshiping God is arranging the people who will come and sow the land for the church forget about the sorrow go ahead something is happening here sing your praise my hands lifted up I will worship you you've taken the pain and the sorrow away you've given me peace on deny there's no need to cry cause you're all you're my father, my everything. Oh, may my day. I got the Go ahead and worship him. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice come on sing to him yeah yeah command a restoration of your passion for God a restoration of your passion for some of you after this conference you will start your own retreat with God because God is calling you you may need to shut down even in the secular we have public holidays where you shut down things so that you can face family or honor a national day or whatever it is God is calling you man of God by now you would have been a mighty prophet by now your business would have gone around the world but you have been searching for every other thing and you ignore the lover of your soul get back to the place of the altar leave me at the altar with my father leave me at the altar with my father Leave me at the altar with my father. 
listen you see until you understand the place of genuine love it is the one secret I found and when I found it it was a master secret love oh I love him I love him I love him I can tell you that you want to see God prosper you second Chronicles 26 5 for as long as he sought the Lord the Lord made him you can try to make yourself vain is the help of man the Lord made him to be the leading man of God within his city the Lord made him the Lord made her the Lord made your products that all of a sudden within one month your product is what is being patronized all over Enugu and people are saying by what means a covenant happened if if a gentleman comes here right now and by evening he returns back and tells you he's a billionaire you will not tell him what did you do you will say where did you go because this kind of wealth is not about what you have done again there there has to be a covenant that has produced this kind of speed we're talking of soaring some of you have lingered too long that is where anger and jealousy and pain and petty things come from you can allow the lover to lift you and you will find yourself soaring in dimensions you never imagined this is my life sit down for five minutes let me introduce something to you and then we'll wrap up just leave those under the anointing leave them to have their time with God the conference is like a retreat for some of you us to love you help us to live for you may we never match you with business may we never match you with church no. may we never match you with anointing prayer is not God prayer is only there because there is God fasting is not God fasting is only necessary because there is God Bible study is not God God is not a page he's alive all and everything points to him and when your life fails and ceases to point to him you are then in trouble let me introduce just one more concept Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 I touch on this and we're done I spoke about the depth and the richness of your experience with God Proverbs 13 13 and verse 20 just one last word 13 and 20 please give it to us 1 3 and 2 0 Proverbs 13 and verse 20 let's read together if you can see it ready one to read he that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed please read it one more time he that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools the bible tells us very clearly from Psalm 115 and verse 16 I believe Psalm 115 and verse 16 it says the highest heavens or the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord but the earth has he given to the children of men that means when it has to do with functioning in the earth the cosmos this is the world of men even though owned by God listen carefully if you do not understand this your leadership will fail I just needed to introduce this even though the earth is the Lord's listen carefully the steward of the earth is man 
the owner of the earth is the Lord. That means for you to excel in life, you must know both the owner and the steward. Are we together now? Yes. Most of us here rent houses and usually you don't have the privilege of seeing the owner or knowing the owner except in a few instances. There usually is someone between the owner and the tenant called the caretaker. Is that true? And the caretaker has been mandated by the owner to protect his interest as far as that business is concerned. Am I correct on that? So it is the, the, the caretaker who does all the negotiations, the paperwork and whatever it is and be overseas. And then there is a care that the earth that we function in belongs to the Lord, Psalm 24. But Psalm 115 is saying the stewardship of the earth is in the hands of man. That means whatever happens in the earth is not a reflection of the power of God. It's a reflection of the faithful stewardship or the mismanagement of that caretaker. If you do not have this wisdom understanding about the cosmos, you can be spiritual and you will still fail. This world is the world of men. Hallelujah. When God put man in the garden, he gave him stewardship. And even when he saw him failing, he still honored his decision. That is how faithful God is. That means it is possible for God to speak excellent things over your life, your church, your business, your state. And yet you do not see God manifest on that wise because we do not understand the dynamics of excelling in the cosmos. Every time I talk to leaders, if I have one thing to teach them is this understanding of men. Yesterday we began to discuss and our time is gone so I'm just going to touch it and then we're done on being helped by God. And I did teach you that there are three expressions of the help of God. Number one is the ministry of mercy. Number two is the gift of man. That means every time God wants to help an individual and help a leader, he introduces you to man. The Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of? not the son of man that thou visitest him you find that in psalm 8 he says for thou has made him lower than elohim you have crowned him with glory and honor to psalm 8 and he says you have set him over the works of hands and in doing so you did not leave anything that was not under his feet you have to appreciate that mankind listen carefully the human species is the zenith of god's creation that means God bound himself with a covenant that every time he has to function in the earth, he will need a man to walk in partnership with him. He can do without a man, but he has so chosen by his predetermined counsel to not walk outside of men. So, the world is the world of men. I don't have time, I would have described for you the condition to be a man because to be a man you first have to be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be a man are we together now every man is first a spirit but a spirit alone cannot be called man you have to be a spirit that is hosted in a physical body there are all kinds of bodies but the only body that makes an individual to be called man is a physical body. And then midwifing that spirit and that body is your mental faculty. Okay. Thank you. Are we together now? Yes. So, there are many spirits. Angels cannot be called men. They are spirits. But they do not have our bodies. With our, our, our configuration is not given to them. Animals have physical bodies, but they do not have spirits. You cannot call animals men. You need to understand who God gave the earth to. God did not give the earth to goats or whatever it is. Water is physical, but you cannot call water man. Even though water moves like man, you can hear the sound like man. So when it has to do with excelling in the earth, 
if you understand your business and you do not understand men you will fail the first product you need to understand is man second only to your understanding of God the moment you understand God as far as leadership and influence and excellence is concerned you must understand man every trouble on earth today came because of man the salvation that we have received came from a man the man called Jesus hmm. are we together the one who purchased salvation for us he did not purchase salvation as a spirit no he had to become a man to come and die as a man man and is today seated at the right hand of the father as a man the reason why we know Jesus is coming is because he left with his body he doesn't need another body to return the assurance of his coming is because when he left he left with his body so he has satisfied the condition that still gives him allowance into the world of men the first time he could not just come because he never had a physical body so he needed to go through the labor of finding a virgin waiting for a virgin and then you know being incubated in a stomach for nine months but this time around he can come anytime because he does not need a body again now watch this everything that happens on earth happens through men you may have heard me teach that all blessings come from God through men to men all troubles come from Satan through men to men because of the presence of men societies are destroyed because of the presence of men evangelism happens because of the presence of men leadership happens territorially speaking because of the presence of men the reason why some nations are called third world and others are called first world is because of men it's not the seas that make them first world or or whatever it is the battle on earth today is for the hearts and the minds of men i hope you know the battle on earth is not for gold the battle on earth is not for oil listen the battle on earth is not even for territory the greatest battle on earth is who captures the hearts and the minds of men the reason why your bank is functioning right now is because of men the reason why you want to build a business right now is because there are men in Enugu if you leave Enugu with goats alone and you are the only human being even if the banks and the oils and everything are left you cannot do business are you seeing that everything literally happens because of men isn't it interesting that everything happens because of men and yet most people learn every other thing but man they do not know about men but they know about business they open a school why are you opening schools because you know people will keep giving birth and their children will go to school your business literally is founded on that philosophy that the presence of men guarantees the continuity of your business some of you who have stores here it's alone because there are humans and even when you cut the hair it will still grow back you cut it you literally build a business around that information why does your rest of men it is men that eat the meal and they will go to the toilet and then return back again so if they buy your pack your bag of rice today you tell him see you next time that statement is predicated on the information that you are a man there is something about you that my business is built upon imagine if we ate once and never had to eat again farming will be useless manufacturing will be useless production will be useless it is because you know that someday this cloth i am wearing is going to go through wear and tear you literally based on that information you built a business around it in one word business is the ministry of men listen carefully please don't think i don't know what i'm saying business is not the ministry of bottles business is not the ministry of containers 
business is not the ministry of cars business is not the ministry of schools business is the ministry of men every other product that you call business is only a midwife the final consumer is a man so if you know your product and you do not know the man the reason why you clean your chairs very early in the morning those who clean this beautiful church when you came here early in the morning probably there was no one or maybe a few people and yet you had the confidence to set the stage because you knew that men will come imagine if you saw cows just coming maybe 30 of them would you say you are welcome god bless you find a place to sit no cows are physical things but that's not what you are looking for men any leader who does not understand men is going to fail as a pastor as a businessman the reason why most of us do not excel in our influence and our leadership is because we took our time to study any other thing and every other thing and we ignored men the zenith of god's creation if god is going to lift you it will come through men relationships are the most expensive commodities on earth relation expensive people will pride and say i'm using a a rolex watch i bought it five million naira and look at it has diamond crested in it and yet they do not know that relationships are of inestimable value you are i always pray for my people and let me extend that prayer for you may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money because if the only thing you have are notes in your house you are not wealthy the real honor of a man is not in his acquisitions the bible says it means your relationships represent the highest index of your wealth the degree to which you are connected to strategic relationships that provide a leverage to your destiny is the measure of your wealth. Money only comes to you through relationships. It will take a hand exchanging to bring wealth to you. Now, please listen. If you do not understand this, you will fail in life. Destiny fulfillment is impossible without relationships. I am here right now in this lovely church because of a relationship. A relationship that started in Nairobi, Kenya, but has been maintained so greatly. Relationships. As busy as I am, there are people who, if they demand my attention, I will respond almost instantly because of the power of relationships. There are people today who did not have to do much in terms of business. They invested diligently in their relationships. And their relation. they did not even start as business people. They started as wise people because they worked with the wise and the end of their pursuit was a business and influence. Politicians understand this. You find out somebody who never had the intention to be a governor or a senator. He only followed wise people. And as he followed wise people, he started evolving to a version of himself that you now call a leader. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. He never gave them any promise that you'll be called apostles. He never gave them any promise that you'll be miracle workers. He said, follow me and I will make you. Through that relationship, he produced those we call apostles who turned the world upside down. Listen to me. Relationships are currencies. They can buy anything money can buy. Anything money can buy, relationships can buy. The easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections. You may have heard me say it in my teaching that who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. Truly, who likes you matters. There are people who can make things happen for others because of the strength of relationships. I know people who got jobs after praying for jobs for three five six years in less than one hour one relationship brought the job for them i know people who got land to build a church there is no true story of success that is not connected to relationships 
The anointing that a man receives in his life is based on relationship. We just graduated our school of ministry students on Sunday, glorious program. And while I was praying for these people, I was looking at them and my heart reached for compassion. I said, look at what relationships can do. There are people who have no business being wealthy except that they were around wealthy people and it became unfair for them to remain in that state. There are people who had no business being anointed but they were around anointed people and it became unfair for them to remain at that level. If I see where you are, it is a reflection of your relationships. He that walks with the wise shall be wise himself but a companion of fools shall be destroyed the man does not want to be destroyed but he's associated with people who are vulnerable to destruction and the end of it is that person is destroyed himself he that walks with the wealthy shall be wealthy he that walks with the anointed shall be anointed he that walks with intelligent people shall be intelligent he that walks with the godly shall be godly that means anything you want to become find those who already are that is your chance of becoming it you want to become a man of god doing ministry with the dignity of kingdom integrity you cannot have that hanging around people who compromises like their second name they don't have any regard for other and spiritual things you want to become someone of character a great leader and a visionary man there are people who are great people but all their friends are drunkards all their friends are unserious people and then they say it doesn't matter i'm not like them yet you are not like them yet you are on your way becoming a child does not know he's a child till he becomes an adult it's when the child becomes an adult he says, oh i once was a child so the drunkard does not know he's becoming a drunkard till he turns later on and finds out that, oh, I'm only doing five now. Listen to me. Most people have not learned the power of protecting their destinies by surrounding themselves with quality godly people. You may have heard me say in my teachings, if there are five foolish people around you, you didn't count well, there are six. If there are five prayer warriors around you, you did not count well, there are six. If there are five visionary people around you, you did not count well, there are six. You are always a reflection of the company that you keep. Even in business, come on, I'm in the East here and you know, there are times that you pass a street that sell electronics. There are 10 shops all selling the same thing and you would think because of the presence of one, they will fail and yet they will all succeed because sometimes you will not find a product in one place and the other one will lead you to another shop where you will get it and he's still happy that you got it because you will come back for their sake. Please hear me. Leaders, if you are to live a qualitative destiny in this end time go ahead to begin to select quality people you must understand the power of men and how to relate with men if you do so if you do not understand relationships you can be anointed and you will be surprised that your work will remain small businessman you may never be able to scale heights and go global it takes more than being anointed the gift of men is one of the ways that God helps men to soar. Are we together? There are many things you need to know about men. You need to understand the vulnerabilities of men. You need to understand the inconsistencies of men. You need to also understand the different kinds of men we have in our world. You have to understand the kinds of relationships that are available. For instance, there are general relationships. The Bible mandates that we treat everyone with love and caution. You go out in the morning and you meet people. General relationships. There are seasonal relationships. Relationships that come to your life for a season. The key to maximizing those relationships is discernment. To receive what they have to deliver to you fast before their expiry time. Then there are covenant or destiny relationships. These are relationships that connect directly, not just to where you are going, but the final journey. 
no matter what you need to do you have to protect those relationships for instance your relationship with the lord jesus christ it can be a general relationship it can be a seasonal relationship your relationship with the lord jesus christ is not even a covenant relationship it is your life that means whatever goes wrong in that relationship you have to humble yourself and swallow your pride and press most people do not understand the power of relationships we keep receiving prophetic words but relationships destroy our potential for growth and scaling heights i want to make a statement and then i wrap up our father that Nubogo, this great man is 83 84. do you know one time daddy traveled down to koinonia just to come and be four years old what is this man coming to do when he can follow online and not that it was any special program and i looked at this man and i said at this age relationships relationships are investments if you tell me today daddy is not feeling fine or something is wrong i can cancel a meeting to come and honor him for his health and don't say ah it's unfair no don't demand a level of my attention in a relationship you have not invested in you see oh dear there are many people who are demanding it is fraud to demand a returns from a, you can't put one naira and want one million no there are people that have not made any meaningful investment and contributions in their lives it would be unfair for me to demand certain levels of their time their resources their attention i have not made that kind of investment in their lives you can't give god 10 minutes and want a global ministry that 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 is unfair are we together now your pastor sometimes he travels down and we just come and worship and share fellowship and he leaves and i'm saying my god look at this there are things that people do in my life that make me become indebted to them there are times that people say oh apostle you've been we are trying to call you we cannot get you but so 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 person said they called and you answered i apologize it's not injustice it's called returns on investment Are we together now as a man of god while everybody is trying to look for you for anointing somebody is asking have you eaten are you okay is god helping you when that person is crying will you keep quiet if your business has not blessed anybody you didn't raise anybody yesterday reverend was talking about the dear woman of God who helped him and all the things that she did you can imagine if for any reason she needs help reverend would get up and say once it is within my power I will go all the way listen life is hard for many people because they have not received the gift of men you have not seen men as a gift are we together if you understand this there are heights somebody met me and he made a statement he said apostle you are a very strange man he said some of the biggest women conferences in this nation you are a man and then you are going there to go and speak to women invited by the highest authorities and i looked at them I said well go and ask god but one thing you can know that the women who invite me are not stupid hallelujah I don't say that to brag but isn't that strange what god can do every time you see unusual results i can tell you among the many dynamics is the ministry of men the ministry of men the ministry of men some of you there is nobody in your life today right now who can give you money and don't mean alone you can just say look um I, I think I need I need to sort out something you are in trouble you are alone except God shows you mercy it is dangerous you are living in a risk are we together 
who loves you right now enough to say over my dead body to see this person cry have you impacted somebody's life that much for you to mean so much to them People today even if they go to be with the lord they will go rejoicing because the investments they have made in men has secured the destiny of their children to the third and to the fourth generation there are many people who will tell you what are you doing i mean real estate what are you doing manufacturing what are you doing importation and export what are you doing maintaining relationships that is my stream of income not i'm not talking about myself alone it will take a foolish person to laugh at you and say ah you mean you are you kidding me that is an investment that does not fail it never fails because you get wealthier from capital appreciation as the person rises he will bless you to honor his perception of your relationship is someone learning now because there are many of you who can destroy men because of your products it does not matter I will push anybody it is my business you are about to crash land it takes the ministry of men when you see me honor the fathers when you see me love the people it's not from a selfish standpoint I love them sincerely but I know one recommendation from a man who loves you can open the next 10 years of your life and then one word of caution from a man of influence who has a problem with you can close a door that was once open some of you there are doors that are closed right now it's not demons that close them they were closed by men someone said be careful and that's it 20 ministrations closed because one person said be careful i can't vouch for him that's it you were in the process of a contract and they said listen five billion is involved here do you trust these people i said well i trust these two i can't speak for this and that's it by the next day you wake up after dancing and they tell you it will not work the problem was not your skill the problem was not your value the problem was that you ignored the ministry of men unbelievers understand what i'm teaching you unbelievers have mastered the art of building ladders through relationships you would hear me say it in my teachings that a man would travel from America to Nigeria to attend the birthday ceremony of a CEO's daughter who is two years old. Is she his friend? Please. Have you not seen people travel to attend weddings of certain people? You know a man who is busy, so busy he flew from Australia, America, to attend a, a, a birthday a, a wedding ceremony of a little girl or a little boy is more than that they are registering their investments i had the opportunity to pray one time for one of the governors when he became a governor you know the the thanksgiving service i was there to preach somewhere and then it happened that it was his thanksgiving service and i saw people who would never have come to church never not even near the gates of church they were there i said what are these people doing here christians muslims known herbalists known traditionalists i mean people were there and i said you see everybody understands this except the church that is the reason why we remain down lot if you are a righteous man and you are in the midst of unrighteous men you are still not safe your personal righteousness may not deliver you from sodom and gomorrah you will need abraham to come and help you are we together my charge for you therefore is you as you take inventory of the various things that you have begin to ask yourself how many useful relationships have i invested in in my life today that can provide a leverage some of you are in this church right now if you cry there is nobody who can answer because your attitude and your disposition towards men once people are not rich you don't have any business with them you continue that way you'll be in trouble i wish i had the time i would have taught you the culture of dealing with relationships it is a principle I have mastered in my life. It is not all about anointing. Valuable relationships. Two keys to maintaining relationships. Number one is honor. 
honor is the discerning the celebrating and the appreciating of men for their uniqueness you cannot be able to maintain quality relationships that translate into an excelling life until you understand honor let me give you one last one number two the second key that you need to be able to maintain relationships is your value and your contribution no relationship will be committed to you indefinitely if you are not adding to it most of us are very parasitic in our relationships you only expect people to do things for you the moment you come you say i'm looking at you you've not done anything for me no nobody remembers those who take we only remember people who give edge the memory of your presence in the life of people by contributing whether it is your value your prayer there's a group of women who pray for me all the time i will never forget them no matter how busy i am because i love them but because of the depth of their contribution to my life i can't forget them i remember the people who have added and continue to add to my life there's no guarantee that i will remember everybody even in a church like this you will find out that sometimes men of god seem to tilt towards others than others it's not it's not being unfair they are tilting towards the area that provides them value if i know that you are valuable you are useful to my life as far as supporting what i represent is concerned i will place priority upon you one prayer father grant me the grace to receive the gift of men into my life to see men as an answered prayer not as a load go ahead and pray grant me the grace to receive the gift of men the Lord helps us by bringing to our lives the gift of men relationships are powerful they are irrefutable without men there is no business without men there is no ministry without men there is no rising in all your learning learn men in all your getting get men in all your investing invest in men in all your receiving receive the ministry of men in all your praying pray for men dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.